What's up? It's Bit Pusher, the original Mr. Macintosh. You know what it is. Oh man, you beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Piece of my childhood, like the best years of my life were running on this system. How funny is that? I want to talk briefly about my beautiful, lovely Quicksilver. This is like the pride of my Mac collection. I love this machine. Dual one gigahertz power PC G4. I've done some nifty things to this machine to give it fresh life. But the one thing about the Quicksilver that bears mentioning is that they do generate serious heat. Thermals were kind of an issue for this otherwise extremely gorgeous design of a tower. I installed one of these, which is a PCI slot fan for those who aren't aware of an accessory like this, and it draws a hell of a good amount of air out of the tower. And as much heat as this generates, that's a big plus. This one's an extra that I'm going to be putting in my old uh, G4 over there, my 400 megahertz G4, just because. But today's procedure is going to be repasting the heat sink because obviously it's quite old and the thermal paste is a very key factor for keeping the CPU cool. Arctic Silver 5, possibly the best thermal paste that you can buy, arguably. So let's take a look. few additions to this machine would of course include that chip right there, that adapter which allows me to take a IDE channel to a SATA solid state drive. A zillion times better in my opinion in the old school mechanical drive. Then just a four slot USB card and of course one of the cooling fans. My ATI video card. Inside here, which you'll see in a sec, I replaced this fan with a brand new one because it died and this one moves way more air. Then this monster. I mean, your typical heatsink is kind of small and square and tall, right? This thing is a monster. Let's get into this. Step one is going to be removing the fan. And through the power of movie magic, it's gone. Removing the screws. Uh, where are we at? Here we are. From these edges on the outside of the case where this bracket mounts. Now, the G4 has these clips that hold the heatsink onto the frame here. And then if you look right there underneath the heatsink, these points where those stick through kind of guarantee that you set the heatsink on this daughter board underneath perfectly. So let's get to it. Okay, I don't own actual like camera equipment. So I mean, I'm gonna try to my best to make this work just to help out. But step one to getting this done is getting the heat sink off obviously. And there's these clips. Well, it's a sort of a clip single clip that hold the card down. So I'm gonna need a dude like this right here and eventually I'm gonna need two of them. But these are very stiff. There we go, there's one. I think just for the sake of how long this will take, I'll kind of cut the video because this is going to take some tinkering. Be right back. <laughs> it is actually a little easier to take another driver and press down on the clip like that. See it moving? But press down and use the other one to pop it out. So now we're in the cooler. I think I'll be able to repeat that for this side. So press down. Bend them out a bit. This one over here. 
are still hanging on for dear life. There we go. Oh, and there's one other little piece of uh, maintenance I did, by the way. Right here where my screwdriver is. I had to replace the PRAM battery. Fortunately, it can still be found. So we can see there isn't a whole lot left of the old thermal paste on there. It's uh, pretty lacking in thermal paste, actually, and as hot as these CPUs get, that's sort of surprising. And there we are. We're going to be using... It's got to be isopropyl alcohol, and you want a pretty high concentration. Probably the higher the better, but I do believe this will be sufficient. And, of course, Q-tips to clean that puppy off. I wanted to get a close look at these while we can. Oh, there's some crap in there to clean out. We'll be taking care of that shortly. But there they are. These are dual 1 gigahertz power PC G4s. All right, so now I'm set up here to do some cleaning. Got the isopropyl alcohol. I love using a, a glass ashtray for something like this because it's just the right size to hold the uh, hold the stuff. We'll get the Q-tip in it, which I will spare you some of that, but um, I will dunk it in there, get it good and saturated. Then I keep some tissues handy to kind of ease that back a bit. And get to it. And clean off the dye of the processor first thing. It's important to see how quickly that dries up. That's one of the things I love about alcohol because you don't want to you know, have wet components in there, obviously. See? I will get through this process. And I will do the same for the back side of my heat sink there. Be right back. All right, now that I've done the cleaning, I have thoroughly cleaned the bottom of the heat sink and of course the dye. So next we will get out the old Arctic Silver. And the method for doing this is a very conductive substance because it's, you know, full of silver particles electrically conductive, so naturally you don't want to get it on any of the chips, like the circuitry, you know what I mean? I don't know what the correct word is, but um, the idea for how to, like, the, the, the correct way to do this is what's called the P method, where you put a drop on about the size of a P, and the stuff will spread quickly once the heat sink is applied and it'll spread some more when it heats up. So it really only requires like a little bit, just a smidge right on the center. It's very crucial because it's stringy to just take your time and getting it off of there. You don't want any little strands of that stuff falling onto the board. And repeat the process for this core, or this die. Lifting up and down, waiting until it breaks loose. Perfect. So, can you see that? Yep, or at least from my view, you can on this camera. Just a smidge in the middle. I will, just for the sake of it here, press this over a skosh. I would feel safer with that. Yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. This is one of those bits of maintenance that most people just don't take the time to do to their computer and is 
old as this machine is going back to you know 2002 it definitely needs it because these bad boys really generate heat so um, as I mentioned earlier about the way these tabs fit onto the daughter card here that the, the CPUs are sitting on makes this part pretty easy is getting it back on centered with the things there so I'm looking from my side here let me see if I can give you a better view or not but I'm going to carefully line up these holes set it slowly okay now at this point reasonably well good to go it's just a matter of getting the clips reattached now everything's good and seated nice and smooth so leave it to Apple to design such a bizarre heatsink. So that took a second, so that's why I kind of cut it there. So it took a minute. You just got to keep pressing down and kind of bending this out until you find the right spot till it clicks into place. So all of that's done. Now it's just a matter of reinstalling my fan. Which This is the custom, or this is not custom, but this is the fan I bought from Newegg. I will post a link again below. Um, I shared this on a previous post on my Instagram, but this dude here moves way more air than the stock one did, and it's a lot quieter because the Quicksilver was kind of a loud tower. This little fan moves a lot of air, but it was actually uh, louder than the big fan in the back there, so you'll have that. So I'll get to it. Get this seated back in here real quick. Sorry, it takes a second to uh, see that. So there we are, all back together and ready to roll. All right, and the old girl is now back in place next to my, uh, I have a long history with that old G4 to the right. I've had that forever, but let's bring her back to life now, knowing that it's going to be running probably a good bit cooler than before between the new fan and getting all that gunky ass old paste out of there. the smile I need to see.
there we be. All right, I hope this was uh, perhaps helpful to somebody that wants to try to refurbish and maintain their classic, beautiful, vintage Macintosh. So this is Bit Pusher, AKA the original Mr. Macintosh. Out of here, see ya.